The UA5002 output transformer is a perfect example of tube to solid state transition period. Like many loved and respected engineers of the post World War II tube electronics era, Bill Putnam Sr. seemed to have been fascinated by the new solid state invaders called transistors. The transistor, operating on a new and different principle arising from basic research on solid substances and how the electrons inside them behave. Similarly to what Rupert Neve explained in one of his interviews, when transistors arrived, he himself, along with other fellow engineers alike, simply tried to replace the tubes with transistors in their tried and true circuits, with as minimal changes to those original circuits as possible. But of course transistors were noisy little beasts. Um, nobody had ever thought of trying to make them uh, to behave uh, quietly in a circuit. The UA5002 transformer first appeared as an output transformer in 1108 microphone preamp. It was a solid state version of the 1008 modular tube preamplifier that was used in many major studios at the time as a building block of recording consoles. The single ended solid state 1108 circuit consists of only three transistors. The latter two transistors are connected as a beefy Darlington pair in class A. Because they are so tiny, Transistors have made it possible to miniaturize many types of electronic equipment. What's unique about this transformer is that it's not just a standard isolating impedance matching device, but in addition to that it incorporates two more separate feedback windings that are connected all over the place in the circuit. It behaves as a sort of an indirect magnetic compressor in a way. I was always curious and very interested to see what's inside this transformer, how it was wound, how many turns and all the details that go with it. So I've decided to disassemble it and unwind it. transformer design it's pretty crazy um, and my dad designed the transformer and I don't know that it's even a good design because it was hard to manufacture and it was really tricky I wound the exact replica but on a PCB bobbin which makes it a lot easier and you don't have to struggle with the leads
A millionth of a watt is enough for the transistor.